Welcome. This week we're going to go over lessons 69 to 72. So how'd last week go? Did your kids like the new games, the corners game and the long chain solitaire? I think it's so cool how that long chain solitaire game has those, the way they change, the way they connect. So neat. Plus the worksheet, which was kind of fun. They had to color in different spots and make a design. I hope that went well. Well, before we get going on this week, let's see what materials we're going to need. We're going to need the math journal, the math card game book, along with the basic number card deck, your abacus, the base 10 picture cards, the place value cards, and their worksheets. Lesson 69, the addition bingo game. I love this game. It's one of our favorites. My granddaughter really likes it too. So on that first page where it talks about the hardest facts, it's asking you to go back or your child to go back to the game, the long chain solitaire. What were some of the harder facts? Have them write it out. And then you guys discuss what is the best way to figure them out. Because not everybody likes all the different strategies. Some strategies really click with some people. Some don't. That's okay. That's why Right Start exposes your children to a variety of strategies. So then they can use the one that works for them. You'll also find that over the course of the lessons and plus playing the games, some of your children are going to start memorizing their math facts. Some of you are going to have children that will have a hard time memorizing their math facts. You would think with all that exposure, yes, that'll be really easy to memorize, but no, it's not. It can be a real challenge for some people. I am one of those people, so I know. However, that's why you have the strategies. Those strategies are so valuable. They help you to figure it out if you don't have it memorized. Now, once I've been exposed and I'm using it for a while and I keep it fresh, Yes, I'm going to remember what those answers are, what those facts are. However, if I haven't done it in a while, I've taken a break, taken a holiday, and then we come back at it, it does not come back automatically. I have to practice again. So some of you have children like that. It's okay. Work with them. Encourage them. Those strategies will make a huge difference. For the addition bingo game, I want to refer to the math card game book to show you how to play. It's really pretty simple, and I think the game book does a good job with the layout. So I'm just going to refer to that. So go ahead and open it up to game A50. When you play this game, you're going to be using the basic number deck without any tens, no tens. So all the numbers zero through nine. Shuffle them up. Now you can play this two people playing or you could play it solitaire. I find it's a fun game to play solitaire. Actually, I'll have my granddaughter do that. When she plays solitaire, we, we call it blackout bingo. She has to bingo on every single card that she's playing. So it's a little bit more challenging, but it really works with all the facts because you're practicing all your addition facts when you play this game. Notice in the figures you have a, an array of four cards going across, four cards going down, and then to the left there's a space and there's another set of four cards going down. Those cards on the left are what you're going to use to add and cover up the answer to the right. So as you do this, if you're playing with more than one person, each person who's playing is going to lay out the same array. They're, that's their own bingo. What happens is, and I'll use this as an example, what cards are left over, you lay them down as the stock. You're going to pick a card, flip it over. Let's say it's a five. I'm going to bring my five over. I'm going to add five plus three. That's eight. Ooh, I could put a card on that. Five plus seven. 12. Oh, I could play the two. Remember, just like some of the other games, we're going to disregard the tens place. Five plus two is seven. I can't play anything on that row. So 
I can go back up to the top two rows and I can decide, do I want to lay a card on the eight because five plus three is eight or do I want to lay it on the two because five plus seven is 12. So whichever one you choose, you're going to lay your card face down on top of that card. And there's an example on the third row. You'll see it, how they laid the card down on top. Well, that's how you play. Then it's the next person's turn, and they flip over a card. If you're playing with two people, then whoever gets the first bingo, and it could be diagonal, it could be across, it could be down, they're the winner. If they're playing solitaire, I would have them play to blackout. Lesson 70, days in a year problem. I just have to point out to you guys, lesson 70. Do you know what that means? We're halfway there. And it makes me think of that. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, oh living on a prayer. Take my hand. Um, we'll make it, I swear. Oh, oh, living on a prayer. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Halfway there. This is a fun activity because they're going to be working with the months and how many days are in the month. And then they're going to get to use side two of their abacus to add up and see how many days are in a year. Now, some of your children may already know how many days are in a year. That's fine. They can do this to verify. But they're getting that exposure and they're learning how to write the, the months, abbreviating the months, and then they are working on how many days we even address leap year in here. I think it's neat how after you enter January and then February, you're asking how many days are in those two months. And then the child is needing to decide if they need to trade, trade how many ones, 10 ones for a 10. And it will progress. And then remember, they do 10 tens for 100. When they're done, look at the bottom activity about the dishes in the cupboard. I want to really stress the second paragraph down there. Let the child work alone to add the list. Assist only when necessary. It is good for your children to struggle. Though they don't have to know everything immediately. We have a tendency, I think, even as adults, but even our children expect that if they don't get it right the first time or they can't figure it out right away, then there's something wrong with them. They're a failure. They give up. But we need to change that, especially when it comes to math. It is okay to struggle. However, if they're having a meltdown, that's not a good thing. So gauge your children. A little bit of frustration, a little bit of struggle is good for them. That's actually when their brain is learning. When it gets to meltdown or there's tears, whatever, stop. Pull back. I wouldn't even try to address it. I would just pull back, go do something else, come back to this another time. Lesson 71, adding 1, 10, and 100. I like this activity. It gives the children different ways to work with adding the numbers. They're going to learn how to add one to a number, to work with adding 10 to a number, to work with adding 100 to a number. Now, when I did this with my granddaughter, I really thought it was going to be pretty easy. I thought it was going to be a cinch and she was going to be like, Grandma, I already know this. No, that's not the case. She had to work hard at doing this. And I was so proud of her when she was able to give me the correct answer, but it did not come as easy as I thought it would. So I just encouraged her. And in the second, on the work, when you're doing the worksheet, I'm jumping ahead really quick, but when you get to the worksheet, it says, let them use whatever materials are needed. Encourage them if they need to use their materials, their manipulatives, then use them, but use the ones that they like. And what I mean by that, if you go back to the first page, it's called the station game. So what you're going to do on a table is you're going to set up the abacus in one spot with the abacus tiles. You're going to set up the base 10 picture cards. On the other side, 
they'll use the back side of the abacus side two so on if you're looking at your diagram on the left side they're using the front plus the abacus tiles the other side the abacus is the back side of the abacus and then they have the place value cards so for the place value cards they'll build the number you tell them for the base 10 picture cards they're going to lay out that number using the base 10 picture cards on the back side of the abacus they're going to use it to to build that number or on the front side of the abacus so let's say you start with 39 they're going to go around and enter this and build it at these different stations then you're going to ask them to add one more so then they have to go back and change it so 39 in place value cards they have to find the 40. they're going to have to add another bead to the abacus now when they're using side two of the abacus you have 39 you add one more they're going to have to do some trading same with the base 10 picture cards so it gives them great practice hands-on practice to understand what they're doing so then when they get to the worksheet they may not need to use any of the materials at all or maybe they will because then you're going to ask them you're going to have 39 you're going to ask them to add 10 to it they'll be at 40 you ask add 10 to it it's going to be 50. all right it goes around then you're going to ask them to add a hundred so now it's going to be 150 and they're going to have to enter into the abacus 150 and they're going to have to use it with the base 10 picture card so i think you get the picture it's actually quite fun and there's specific numbers that they have in the lesson that you ask your children to do now between the different sets you're going to clear everything so after we're done adding 100 and we you know we have 150 when we start with a new number as in a number that hasn't had a number added to it you're going to clear everything and they start over i think this activity really will help you see if your children have a good number sense about them and if they don't you know what more practice it's okay but this is really good to see like i said when i did this with my granddaughter i realized she's still struggling a little bit on her number sense so we've kind of we slowed it down a little bit more we're playing a lot more of the games and so I see her improving. But if your children are coming in and they've been using Right Start, they may not have as much of a struggle with the number sense like my granddaughter did, who's coming into Right Start after four years of public school. Last lesson of the week, lesson 72, adding four digit numbers. This is such an exciting lesson because your child is going to be adding four digit numbers in level b at the halfway mark it's really quite impressive and you will walk them through it and you'll see i mean it lays it out in the book so then they'll add the ones column and you'll ask do we need a trade they're going to say yes because there's going to be more than 10 so they're going to trade now one thing i do that doesn't really show it in the book when we're trading and I'm going to take the 10 ones and I'm adding a 10. I have them stop the 10 about three fourths of the way up the wire. Then they're going to write on their paper. And you're going to ask them, how many ones do you have? And they're going to write their ones. Well, what did you do with what you traded? I traded a 10. So where are we going to? record that i think it's really important that a child understands we're not just adding a one into that column but we're adding one ten to that column and then it continues and then you add the tens then you'll move to the hundreds do trading if you need to move to the thousands and then you'll have your answer well we made it through this week what a fun week it's halfway there you guys should do something to celebrate and i'm excited for you guys adding four digit numbers on the abacus that is i'm telling you it's it's an achievement that's something to celebrate too 
Join me next week as we go over lessons. Oh my gosh. Total blank. <laughs> Join me next week as we go over lessons 73 through 76. Until then. <laughs>